uh, Arrieta Beach where race start should be taking place just in a few minutes at this year's ICF Canoe Ocean Racing World Championship. So please be welcome to this year's event. Uh, there you can see the lineup uh, of the women's. Very tough job from the race officials um, trying to get a fair start for everybody so nobody can complain. Uh, initially the plan was to make a jumping start so that that's an easier job for race officials and also easier probably for paddlers to make a safe start but there was some shore break coming in uh, on the beach in La Garita, uh, Arrieta on the town where traditionally since 2017 the Atlantic Ocean Surf Ski Race takes place. Um, on today's race for the women's we've got Michelle Byrne clearly a uh, favorite for the women's title. Uh, we've got Judith Vergés from Spain, local host, Amaya Osaba, Chloe Barnett, and a few of the French ladies also, as Claire de Was and Lisa Gras from France. And there's a, a number of emerging nations, such as Cyprus, Saint Tome, and Principe, and Greece, that have made the travel here down to Lanzarote. Okay, so it seems that uh, they're off. There they go. World Championships is on. So there they go. Looks like Buenos días, damas y caballeros. Eh, estamos aquí en la playa de Arrieta, Campeonato del Mundo de Ocean Racing de la Federación Internacional de Piragüismo. Eh, como bien comentábamos antes en inglés, eh, han partido la, las chicas y ahora mismo deberían de salir los botes un par de minutos después. Como pueden ver, las condiciones pues, son bastante complicadas, pero a la par muy entretenida para la inmensa mayoría de los deportistas que hoy se han dado cita aquí en la playa de La Garita, en Arrieta, para disputar el quinto campeonato del mundo eh, de manera interrumpida debido a la pandemia eh, que ha traído el ya famoso COVID-19 y eh, estamos aquí para retransmitirles en directo toda la información y todos los detalles sobre este evento. Como bien comentábamos eh, al inicio de la retransmisión, eh, estamos en la playa de La Garita, en Arrieta, donde pues bueno, eh, se da cita la ya famosa Atlántico Sean Surf Ski de, de Lanzarote, una prueba que se ha celebrado con carácter anual ininterrumpidamente desde 2017 y que hoy pues, tiene el placer la isla de acoger el, el mundial de ICF Ocean Racing. Pues ahí tenemos a, a las chicas que ya han dado la, la salida, como bien comentábamos antes. Y bueno, pues estamos aquí eh, intentando ver quiénes van en en las posiciones delanteras, seguramente Michelle Bourne. Y, y aquí tenemos en la siguiente imagen al grupo de, de cabeza, parece ser. Disculpen que ha habido una serie de problemas técnicos. Vale. 
Vale, en imagen tenemos a las chicas eh, a bordo del Think Jet con la Ligra de España y de, de Club Marín de Lanzarote, piragüista local que ha estado echando una mano con eh, los test de COVID y es una piragüista de los marines eh, emergente en la escena nacional e internacional. Eh, tiene un futuro, la verdad, que bastante esperanzador. Eh, como pueden ver, como indicamos antes en inglés, las condiciones pues, son bastante técnicas y tenemos eh, pues, viento de lado y ola de lado durante los 3, 4 primeros kilómetros. Espectacular, los acantilados de la isla de los volcanes y, y el mar que, que baña la, el litoral de, de Arrecife. La verdad que es bastante espectacular. Y aquí en imagen tenemos pues a los, los chicos iniciando el calentamiento. En imagen vemos a los locales Gabriel Hernández Caraballo y eh, Diego Rodríguez Montamariña, al igual que Oscar Fermín Asensio Cocker del Club Marín de Lanzarote. Y eh, en imagen tenemos ahí a Aurora Figuera de España. Vemos pues, como en una regata tan, tan larga como esta es muy importante la, la toma de decisiones ya que hay que hacer una buena la lectura del, del mar y es vital, de vital importancia eh, saber tomar las decisiones adecuadas en el momento adecuado ya que esto pues va a dictar el, el resultado de la carrera. En imagen tenemos a Maite Chávez del, eh, de Sumaya, España. También tenemos en imagen a Carlota Duarte de Portugal. Un poquito más abajo, a bordo de Locrea, tenemos a una chica de Francia. Y ahí mismo podemos ver la disputa por el grupo de, de cabeza. Vemos a, a las sudafricanas, las hermanas Hockley. Vemos ahí también a Zona de Jin de España. Tenemos a Emma Broberg de Dinamarca. Y a Claire de Was de Francia. All right, so apologies for the uh, different difficulties, technical difficulties. Uh, right on picture now we have Anna Suetis from the US, just trying to take a wider line of the cliffs. What a magnificent picture we have here at the island of the volcanoes. So as I was saying before in Spanish, um, the race score is very demanding because there is no room for mistakes, as we said, Um, this race course presents many different uh, conditions. On the first half of the race, we've got very technical conditions, especially on the first three kilometers. Um, then once we go across the point in Arrieta, uh, we turn on a 12 kilometer downwind all the way to Los Ancones. And from there, we've got another 10 kilometers down to the uh, town of Arrecife where we have more clear runs and that's where paddlers will probably make the most out of the downwind conditions and enjoy the most. But as we said, there's different preferences for paddlers. Right on picture we have Judith Vergés, no stranger to many different disciplines uh, related to on-water sports. She's uh, racing for Spain. 
and she's uh, that's uh, Judith Vergesse as we said she's on board her fan racing for team fan and team by Kobe representing Spain and as we said she's a very uh, experienced water women and she races also on the prong board on the different life-saving uh, disciplines on the board swimming ski paddling and running and she truly has uh, a very high level of fitness so should be no stranger uh, on the first spots of the podium as we said in the beginning uh, Michelle Byrne from South Africa should be one of the favorites uh, for the title but she has some tough contenders despite the some of the absences here from South Africa Australia or New Zealand um, Judith Verges alongside Chloe Bannett uh, Amaya Osava French paddlers like Lisa Gras and um, Claire de West should be also in contention for the title today and as we were just speaking before uh, this pandemic has threatened the status of this year's event but should not uh, be any problem as we have seen yesterday the brilliant opening ceremony made by the organizing committee with the help of the International Canoe Federation right on picture we can see the magnificent views here in the island of the volcanoes and men's start should be taking place quite soon so there we can see all the men warming up como estábamos comentando antes Judith Vergés de España estaba compitiendo en imagen y aquí tenemos a la cabeza de carrera Michelle Burn de Sudáfrica Segundo puesto en el Campeonato del Mundo en Portugal en 2013. Y la verdad que, como decíamos, clara favorita al título en el día de hoy. As we said, Michelle Byrne here on picture, making the most out of the choppy water and trying to find her way out here on the choppy waters of the island of Lanzarote. What a magnificent picture here with the cliffs, all the waves rebounding on the cliffs and coming back. So it is very important to notice uh, and to state the difficulties that the South African team have gone through. The organizing committee was in constant communications with the Canoeing South Africa Federation. And The organizing committee has made a very tough job trying to speak to the different authorities, but unfortunately the Ministry of Health couldn't grant permits for the visa applications for most of them. So all of these South Africans that are here today are were traveling on dual citizenship, which is kind of unfair, but it is what it is and organizers have to play ball with the the conditions that they had now. So as we stated, the conditions we have here on today's race, we have 18 knots of wind and 1.8 meter swell coming from the northeast. So that should be making up for some pretty spectacular downwind and paddlers will be reveling on the very stable conditions that we've been having throughout the whole week here on the duration of the whole event. So it is pretty spectacular to see how comfortable and how easy she's making uh, look how paddling throughout the waves and, and navigating her way on the sea. And Judith Vergesse is taking an outside line. It seems like it's paying off for her. It would be very interesting to see uh, how paddlers trace 
their strategy. So we've got Judith Vergès trying to make some contention to uh, Michelle Byrne from South Africa and talking a little bit about the um, the conditions here. The race is 26 kilometers long, so there is uh, it is necessary to have a lot of attention to detail because if you go too hard from the start you then have to think that you have a very technical condition and very physically demanding uh, section until Los Ancones and from there on it's more physiologically uh, demanding so runs tend to get longer and it is very difficult uh, for paddlers to know when to go hard or when to take a bit of a rest. So, as we said, both paddlers are looking pretty comfortable in these uh, conditions. Judith Vergès trains not too further from here. She trains now in the island of Gran Canaria and it has similar conditions to the conditions we have here today. So, uh, as we said, uh, should be doing pretty well today and be a tough contender to Michelle Byrne in today's race. Como decíamos antes, eh, vemos a Judith Berge en imagen intentando dar casa a Michelle Byrne que ha decidido tomar una línea interior. Ahí vemos a Judith apoyando la pala, la verdad que surfeando bastante bien y se le ve bastante cómoda. Y es muy importante tomar estrategia y eh, pues tomar una buena decisión. Y aquí tenemos la salida de los hombres. Vemos en eh, imagen a Oscar Chalupski. Vemos también a un palista brasileño muy cerca de él. Esteban Medina tomando, parece ser, la delantera de la regata. La verdad que es un trabajo muy difícil para los cámaras en estas condiciones, pero los palistas van a disfrutar muchísimo de esta competición. So as we said, the men's are just off the start and we can see Esteban Medina from Spain taking the lead in what looks like a very extensive field on today's race. We saw also Oscar Chalupski at the bottom of your picture and again just enjoying these magnificent views of the island of the volcanoes. So it looks like Esteban Medina is still on the lead. Oscar Chalupski has fallen back a little bit. He might be taking a more conservative approach, taking into account that he just recovered from his bone marrow cancer. And he said, he was mentioning previously uh, to the different paddlers that he was just here to take uh, some holiday and enjoy the race. We can see in the lead a few Nordic kayaks, that's probably Gordon Harbrecht and Walter Bozan, who are going off the lead. And now we have here Judith Vergez again on picture. We can't see where Michelle Byrne is. Wow, it must be a very, very demanding race today. Although paddlers will be enjoying a lot these conditions. There you can see in the background the town of Arrieta. They are coming on the three kilometer mark. And here the men, we can see the head of the race Probably one of the favorites for today's title, Gordon Harbrecht from Germany, or originally from Rostock. On board his Nordic kayak, he has been spending a week here training, trying to make sure he scouts the coastline. On top of your picture, you can see Nicholas Norton from South Africa, also a very favorite uh, contender for today's title. And as in the ladies' race, it's going to be 
a very interesting race to watch. Know what decisions to make at the right time and try to make the most out of the conditions. So now taking the lead in the women's race, it seems that Michelle Byrne has decided to go close to the rocks. She might be very familiar with it. Look at that view. Putting her paddles down is not an easy thing. Trying to brace while making the most out of the runs. In chopping conditions, you gotta have a lot of knowledge and that's what South Africans are known for. People that spend a lot of time out at sea There we have the powerful man from Rostock, Germany, Gordon Harbrecht, very visible on his green life jacket and green tip on his boat. There we have Michelle Byrne, seems to be enjoying a lot today's race. And there we have, as we said, Gordon Harbrecht with Nicholas Notton high on his heels. In terms of strategy, this race is pretty demanding. We have got a very technical section all the way to the point where just Michel Byrne was coming by a few instants ago. From there you have another eight to nine kilometers until Los Ancones where you have a choppy downwind unless you take an outside line uh, I think that is pretty much going to pay off on today's race try and take an outside line because you might be able to get some bigger swell but at the same time too you cannot go too wide because the wind will be offshore as soon as you go past Costa de Ise and enter in the capital city of this magnificent European sports destination, Lanzarote. Comentábamos al principio, cabeza de carrera en los hombres, tenemos a Gordon Harberg de Alemania, claramente uno de los favoritos para el título de hoy. También tenemos a Nicolas Noten de Sudáfrica, dando casa al alemán. Y al igual que en la carrera de las mujeres, comentábamos que la estrategia va a ser muy importante en el día de hoy. La toma de decisiones es clave, no hay margen de, de error y va a ser muy importante decidir qué línea tomar en este, en este recorrido. Como decíamos, es un recorrido súper completo. Como mencionaba el español Esteban Medina, decíamos que pues, la regata presentaba... Eh, todo tipo de condiciones al inicio sobre todo en los primeros tres kilómetros tenemos unas condiciones muy muy técnicas eh, de ahí hasta el kilómetro 12 en la punta de los ancones tendríamos un downwind pues con bastante rebote eh, no muy limpio pero con posibilidad de disfrutarlo bastante y, y bueno ahí tenemos una hermosa batalla entre lo que parece que va a ser la cabeza de carrera durante el día de hoy. Ahí tenemos a Gordon Harbrecht, codo con codo, con el señor Nicolas Noten de Sudáfrica, que han hecho un esfuerzo increíble y titánico por llegar aquí a la isla de Lanzarote. El comité organizador estuvo en constante comunicación con la Federación Sudafricana para intentar traerlos aquí, debido a los problemas que, derivados de la cepa que azota al país y con la colaboración del Consejo Superior de Deportes se consiguió extender una invitación pero el Ministerio de Sanidad no dejó viajar a aquellos que solamente tenían pasaporte sudafricano con lo cual los que están hoy aquí tienen pasaporte eh, europeo, tienen doble nacionalidad y se les ha permitido la entrada en la frontera española para así poder disputar este quinto mundial de Ocean Racing de la ICF en la isla de los volcanes, destino europeo del deporte. 
Ayer vimos cómo se celebraba el Ironman de Lanzarote, una prueba de reconocimiento mundial. Hoy se celebra el Campeonato del Mundo de Ocean Racing que estamos aquí retransmitiendo en directo en la página web del Campeonato del Mundo www.icfcanoeoceanracinglanzarote.com y también retransmitimos en Planet Canoe, en YouTube y en Facebook. So as we were saying, just take a look at this beautiful battle between what it looks like it's going to be the leaders of today's start and it will all be down probably to these two men. Gordon Harbrecht who finished seventh at the last edition of the ICF Canoe Ocean Racing World Championships. He was also second at the 2018 ECA European Ocean Racing Championships in Alicante 2018 and Nicholas Norton who was fourth at the International Canoe Federation Ocean Racing World Championships in the French town of Quiberon and second at the 2019 Perth Doctor, one of the world's most important races on the calendar. So as we said in the beginning, race officials had to make a very tough decision to cancel the plan and instead of doing a jumping start, they swapped to a, uh, a on-water start. Right on picture, we've got probably one of the followers in the ladies. Uh, we had Chloe Bannett from Spain. She's originally from South Africa, then raced for Great Britain and now is racing from Spain. So it's very funny to see um, how many countries he has represented in the past. Looks like right on picture we've got on board the Nordic kayaks. Looks like Emma Levemir from Sweden. She was seventh at the ICF Canoe Ocean Racing World Championships in Tahiti in 2015 with very similar conditions to what we have here today at this year's event. We remember that year we had 34 kilometer Danwin from the Hitia Marine all the way down to Papiet in Arue and that Swedish girl has made a very blistering career in surf ski paddling. She's a master uh, actually but she races in the senior. We can see how she puts her pedals down and tries to enjoy and make the most out of the race. On the yellow tip carbonology pulse is Chloe Bonnet very tall individual. Those long arms are quite helpful for paddling in these conditions. And switching now to the men's race, look at this picture. It's just gorgeous to see the water coming off the cliffs. Next to me is Jurgen, IT guy for today's live streaming from Tree Life and he's just sweating <laughs> watching his cameraman just trying to do the best job possible and he's just frightened with all the rebounding waves and now in picture we can see what we think is one of the Hockley sisters Again, on choppy water, you gotta take it easy. You don't wanna go too hard and not try to fight the ocean. You gotta work with it. Try and make the most of the swell. And as Austin Kiefer from the US said once, you gotta work with it and try to understand it and make a good read of the conditions instead of trying to fight against it. Which is one of the mistakes that most beginners do in the beginning. Muy bien, pues como comentábamos antes, está en imagen una de las hermanas Hockley de Sudáfrica y ahora pasamos otra vez 
a la carrera de los hombres donde parece que Nicolás Noten ha decidido eh, dar un pequeño golpe sobre la mesa e intentar tomar la delantera al ya archiconocido y poderoso Gordon Harbreck. Como comentábamos, su palmarés eh, es bastante escalofriante. Quedó séptimo en el último campeonato del mundo en la ciudad francesa de Quiberón y eh, quedó subcampeón de Europa detrás de Esteban Medina de España en Alicante. Eh, la progresión de este palista alemán ha sido meteórica en los últimos años y bueno, vemos como la distancia entre los países europeos que ya hace unos años pues eh, estaban un par de escalones por debajo de las dos naciones o tres naciones eh, que suelen copar los primeros puestos que suelen ser Sudáfrica, Australia y Nueva Zelanda y aquí vemos a Nicolás Noten intentando no volverse loco como bien decíamos es súper importante sobre todo en condiciones muy técnicas eh, no tomar decisiones equivocadas y no, eh, no luchar contra el mar. Es muy importante, como decía Austin Kiefer en uno de sus vídeos, eh, el océano hay que leerlo, el océano hay que entenderlo, hay que intentar sacar el máximo jugo posible de las condiciones e intentar ser uno con el mar, con la piragua, con la pala e intentar hacer la lectura para navegar a lo largo de la costa. Volvemos otra vez en imagen a seguramente la cabeza de carrera, Michelle Bourne, que quedó segunda en el campeonato del mundo en Portugal. Fue el campeonato del mundo inaugural de la ICF. Recordamos que esta disciplina, pues, no sabría, no sabría si considerarla ya disciplina emergente o ya disciplina más que establecida, porque la progresión que ha tenido este deporte, sobre todo el desarrollo que, se ha, que, que ha tenido en Europa, y fuera de Europa, en Brasil, por ejemplo, o en Estados Unidos, Tahití y demás países fuera de Australia y Sudáfrica que fueron, digamos, un poco los padres de este deporte, eh, pues ha tenido un desarrollo espectacular y, y bueno, ha hecho que este deporte ya se tome un poquito más en serio y, y va ganando pues, un papel muy importante en la Federación Internacional de Piragüismo, la ICF. Volvemos a Nicolás Noten. So it's pretty uh, interesting to see how Gordon Harbrecht is trying to chase. Nicholas Noten, who seems to be putting the hammer down and trying to open a bit of a gap on the rest of the field. Uh, traditionally, this sport was originated in South Africa and Australia, as well as in New Zealand and Tahiti also was one of the first nations to take on this all-round sport that has, as David Moke saw it from Fischuk, a blend, a unique blend of adventure, fitness, and racing. And now, as we said previously in Spanish, um, Surfki seems to be gaining a very important role on the International Canoe Federation as a sport, as we've been having a lot of development in the European nations, such as Germany, Spain, France, Italy, Portugal, Sweden, and the emerging nations such as Cyprus and Greece and overseas we've got the US of A and Tahiti. So now it seems like Europe has been shortening the gap between the commanding nations. Wow, looks like Gordon is going to have to fight really hard to catch Nicholas Noten. 
As we stated in the beginning, anything can happen throughout the whole distance of the race. And this race course in particular, as well as the one in Hong Kong at the 2017 ICF World Championships, offers a bit of everything. So the paddler that manages to make the most out of all sorts of conditions will be winning today's title. So as we said previously, the first three kilometers are side on swell and wind coming on your left hand side of the boat. The following eight to nine kilometers are quite choppy but more enjoyable and clear runs if you take an outside line and the following 10 kilometers coming by Costa Teguise from Los Ancones all the way down to Arrecife should be um, pretty much the more clean section I would say and as soon as you come into Arrecife the swell kind of flattens a little bit and there's a bit of a leftover swell but not much to do in terms of putting your pedals down so it will be very interesting to see if Nicholas move will be paying off or if this is gonna be costing him the gold medal All right, there we go, Nicholas Norton putting his pedals down. Pasando la carrera de las chicas, tenemos a Judith Vergés. Parece ser que la línea exterior la está favoreciendo bastante. Ahí vemos cómo pone la pala abajo para intentar sacar el máximo jugo e intentar descansar un poquito. Ahí está un poco digamos la la magia del arte del surfeo intentar descansar lo máximo posible entre olas para luego poder tener esos picos de potencia en los que tendrán que acelerar bastante para coger las siguientes olas habíamos visto como Michelle Bourne había optado antes por una línea más interior y será muy interesante ver como tras un año y medio, prácticamente dos años, sin verse las caras, ver cuál va a ser el resultado de la pugna que ha habido siempre entre los países que suelen liderar esto, esta disciplina, que suelen ser Sudáfrica, Australia y Nueva Zelanda, versus los demás países como Estados Unidos, los países europeos, los países de Asia y el resto de países africanos ahí vemos a, a Judith como decíamos y ahí tenemos al que parece ser cabeza de carrera Nicolás Noten fue subcampeón del mundo en 2017 en Peter Marisburg en Sudáfrica, en sus aguas locales, en la categoría sub-23 en maratón. También competidor en la modalidad de salvamento, al igual que Judith Vergés, con lo cual estamos hablando de un waterman en condiciones. Y, como explicábamos antes, la magia del surfeo, ver cómo apoyan pala entre olas para dejarse llevar intentar beneficiarse al máximo de la energía de las olas que están propulsando a estos palistas hacia Recife
there we can see both screens. Ladies on the bigger picture, Nicholas Notton in the men's race. He's trying to make out all the best of today's conditions. He's pretty sure that they will be reveling on today's conditions and we will be in on a very fast race. So I expect, you should expect uh, the front bunch coming into El Reducto Beach, just behind our studio in our production set. In about an hour and 20 minutes, 20-ish minutes. So as we said in the beginning, there we have the finish line area of El Reducto. So you can see how much the conditions change from one place to another. But now just let's just look at Nicholas Notting making the most of today's conditions. Originally from Fishuk. Probably one of the meccas of surf ski paddling with the infamous Miller's Run and the infamous Miller's Taxi driven by Vicen Cicatello driving all paddlers every single day at many different times of the day to Miller's Point on the 12 km downwind which has been the main scene for downwind tutorials but as we can see Lanzarote has nothing to envy to South Africa as we can see there's pretty big seas today and there we have Judith Vergès looks like she's in the lead and that the long the outside line is going to pay off better for her and Nicholas Notton looks like he's just flying today just making an outstanding job So technique is really important also, it leads you to be more efficient and save more energy and go faster at the same time. So as you can see, Nicholas Notton's stroke is pretty good, he has a very powerful catch, he does, he has also a very solid leg drive, which is essential and contrary to what most people think, it is not an arm sport. It mainly comes from the legs and the whole body needs to work in motion and in coordination trying to deliver the best, trying to distribute the force and the energy and all the power that these guys need to apply as you can see on scene. Nicholas Notton is fighting really hard now. He's just such a beast. Now putting his pedals down. Member of the Orca squad. My friend Jürgen here is just amazed at the ease of Nicholas Notting to navigate his way through. He's probably doing everything look more easier than the Zodiac and the motorboat drivers here on today's race. There we have Gordon Harbeck. It seems like he's opening, taking an outside line, giving chase to Nicholas Notton. There on picture we can see some of the Brazilian paddlers. This looks like the following group. There we have 
looks like from this angle we can appreciate much more the conditions. It's a pretty noticeable swell size, 1.8 meters from the northeast along the coastline all the way down to the coming into Arrecife and the wind is blowing at 18 knots close to 20 so just perfect conditions for Saski Tallinn today So our cameramans are just switching batteries on the cameras for the ladies. It will be very interesting to see if the men are gonna catch up with the uh, ladies. There has been a trend lately to throw and launch the ladies start a few minutes ahead of the boys and have a race as well as a prize money uh, to see who makes it to the beach first at Nello Summer Challenge. This is a very popular tradition in Portugal, also a very hot spot, a uh, very interesting hot spot for surf ski paddling with the so known event from Andre from Nello where they hosted the inaugural World Championship event in 2013. Event won by the beast from Fishuk, Sean the Prawn Rice. Winner again on the 2019 event in Kibaon whilst 2015 and 2017 Tahiti and Hong Kong was won by Corey Hill from Australia from the Gold Coast and it is very interesting to see how depending on the conditions some paddlers can do better than others I'd say the Tron Rice would go better on flat seas or small chop whereas Corey Hill is just very comfortable on the big surf there in North Cliff. He tends to have a lot of surf and they do very long paddlebacks as training runs. There we can see Nicholas Nutton again. Looks like he switched his approach and trying to take an outside line compared to what he did in the beginning, trying to come closer to the rocks. It is very important as soon as they approach Los Ancones to try and stay away from the cape as the rebounding waves comes back to you and that can slow you down unless you are very proficient on choppy water. There we can see, looks like Nicholas Nutton has overtaken one of the ladies. It may be Emma Robert from Denmark.
back on picture, Nicholas Norton. Looks like he will have very good memories from from this event, today's race. It's gonna be very interesting. There we can see how his leg drive is pushing him through the surf. And it's all about linking one run after the other. It's Boyens Latera from Bulgaria, owner of the Surfki Center in Tarifa, said he either goes full speed or paddles down. Other paddlers, such as Twin Robinson, would take a, a more slower cadence approach. Some people like to put their paddles down, others just prefer to just keep the paddles moving even if they are not applying full power, just so they have control of their technique. And the bracing stroke is really, really important. Oscar Chulupski from South Africa mentions that on most of his clinics and all of the paddlers he coaches. Como decíamos al inicio, es muy importante tener cuidado con el ritmo que se lleva en carrera. Hay que tener mucho cuidado con no luchar contra el mar, intentar sacar el máximo de las condiciones. Muy importante, muy interesante ver los distintos enfoques. Boyan Slatarev de Bulgaria, dueño del Surf X Center en Tarifa, comentaba en uno de sus posts que o bien iba a tope a por la ola o bien ponía las palas abajo para surfear. Hay otros palistas tipo Clint Robinson de Australia que toman un enfoque más de mantener las palas en movimiento, paseando la pala como quien dice para seguir centrándose en la técnica, en la respiración y en no perder la vista de la proa para intentar meterla en las olas y seguir enlazando olas porque de esto trata el Dan Wynn Vamos a entrar en el track a ver cómo van los palistas. Parece ser que en primera posición en las mujeres va Michelle Bourne de Sudáfrica, segunda en el Campeonato del Mundo en Portugal. En segunda posición, muy de cerca, dando casa a la sudafricana, como comentábamos antes, es muy interesante ver la lucha entre los países europeos que han ido recortando distancias con los sudafricanos desde 2003 en el evento inaugural en Portugal, que tuvo lugar desde la playa de Ofir hasta la ciudad de Vila do Conde. En Tahití también tuvimos a Yannick Laus de Francia, que iba muy de cerca también con respecto a los sudafricanos, ganando a Hank McGregor, el ya archiconocido en las disciplinas de maratón 
y Ocean Racing. En mujeres tenemos muy de cerca también a Judith Vergés, Ana Suetis, la estadounidense, campeona del mundo en 2019 en la ciudad francesa de Quiberón, en la categoría junior, originalmente de Bellingham, en el estado de Washington. Y ahí tenemos en imagen a Judith Vergés de España con su chaleco azul. Tradicionalmente la regata de las chicas debido a la baja participación solía ofrecer bastante diferencia entre la cabeza de carrera y el resto de palistas, pero se ve que a pesar incluso de la pandemia que azota al mundo entero, tenemos una regata bastante igualada en las chicas, donde seguramente no haya eh, pues más de 200 metros quizás entre las tres primeras. En cuarta posición le sigue Emma Levemir, la sueca que comentábamos había quedado séptima en el Mundial en Tahití. Una palista ya de avanzada edad, no me vayan a malinterpretar. En quinta posición con el dorsal 86, Chloe Bannett, originalmente de Sudáfrica pero ahora corriendo por España. Seguida de la otra favorita de las españolas, Amaya Osaba Laverri de Pamplona con el dorsal 87 y parece ser que Jade Wilson la sigue de Sudáfrica también corriendo en la categoría sub-23 disculpen teníamos muy cerca de Emma Levemir Saskia Hockley que va ganando la carrera de las mujeres junior ahí tenemos a Nicolas Noten como decíamos Right, so, as we were saying, on the women's, we have just logged in on the track, the live tracking, the GPS. There's a very intense battle going between the three contenders for the gold medal. Michelle Byrne from South Africa with Judith Verges slightly of her, with Anna Swetish following very closely to Judith Verges. So it looks like it's going to be everything down to those three women with Saskia Hockley from South Africa coming in first place in the juniors and fourth overall so she could also be contender for a medal with about 10 kilometers left in their race followed by Spanish paddlers Amayo Saba Olaverri from Pamplona and Chloe Bannett who now lives in Tenerife, but also has a residence in South Africa. Jade Wilson just behind them too. Probably winner of today's Sunday 23 race. Rojin Cahill from Ireland, also doing a very good job. Round picture, we've got Nicholas Notton taking the lead in the men's race, it seems like he has opened the gap between him and Gordon Habrecht, probably about 50 meters away from him, just following very closely his line. And Gordon seems to be battling it out also with the next paddler, number 132, Victor Du, who's in uh, third place currently. Very interesting to see him fighting in this uh, race, Ulvert Hart on the inside. So it seems like the men will be overtaking most of the women's um, slightly after Costa Teguise. But now the man on picture, Nicholas Notten from South Africa. Looks like Walter Bozan is following closely in contention for the bronze medal with Esteban Medina very closely behind him. Nicolas Lombert also following them. And Bernardo Pereira from Portugal who is one of the most youngest paddlers racing in the junior category. European champion in 2018. 
suitable metal is sorry. Check Karolina Palodova in the women's. Probably just next to the top 10 spots in the women. Apologies for the technical difficulties that we are going through. We're having some trouble to follow the women's race. And now we're just having on picture Nicholas Norton. And as we mentioned earlier, it will be very interesting to see the difference between the Spanish, the rest of the Europeans and the South African paddlers. So Nicholas is just approaching the halfway mark in the point of Los Ancones. As we said, I think it is very advisable to take an outside line from there as the rebounding waves come just towards you as you come past that point. And now we have a change in conditions. The choppy stuff is over and the more clear runs will be starting to appear as they enter in the touristic town of Costa Teguise, where probably a lot of the paddlers will be taking refreshments once the race is over. Plenty of bars over there to have some barley juice and some tapas. Mr. Oscar Chulupski was mentioning he was a big fan of the garlic prawns. now living in Portugal. There we can see again Nicholas Nutton doing a brilliant job. Looking very comfortable now. Seems like his move paid off to him and looks in control of the race. But as we said, as he enters into Costa Teguise, this is going to be a very physiologically demanding stretch of water as long as runs tend to get longer and it will be very interesting to see how Gordon tries to close him down <coughs> as Gordon is more proficient on those kind of conditions and that's why he came here to train in the lead up to the race with the host club, canoe club, Marlines de Lanzarote, who have done an outstanding job hosting this event in these very difficult times and should be president of the comeback of international racing. Comentábamos bien al inicio Estamos ahora siguiendo el track de la regata con Nicolás Noten tomando la delantera en la carrera de los hombres seguido a unos 100 o 200 metros del alemán Gordon Harbrecht con Víctor Du dando casa y los españoles Walter Bousan y Esteban Medina peleándose por el cuarto puesto junto a Uli Hart de Sudáfrica, campeón del mundo junior en 2019 en la ciudad francesa de Quiberón. Diríamos que aproximadamente unos 30, 40 minutos deberían de estar ya aproximándose a la zona de meta. Y ahí tenemos a Emma Levemir detrás de Saskia Hockley de Sudáfrica dando casa al trío de chicas que va a dar mucho de qué hablar en la regata, en la lucha por la medalla de plata, Ana Suetis y Judith Vergés. Parece que Michelle Bourne se ha mantenido fija en su línea pegada a costa. Ya lleva unos 16 kilómetros y medio con el dorsal 96.
All right, as the Tree Life stuff was mentioning, there was an issue with the batteries on the cameras. Nicholas Nutten has about 20 women ahead of him to catch up. It will be very interesting to see if he will be able to take over Michelle Byrne and close that six to ten minute gap that was put in place by the race officials. To separate the ladies start and the men's start. Race officials have done a very fantastic job from ICF and the Spanish Federation. Making the right call to not do a jumping start and do an on water start just so no boats would have any trouble on the shore break. It is clear that very probably the life saving experts from South Africa, a few of the Spanish like Judith Verges and the Irish Roisin Cahill wouldn't have any trouble on the shore break, but a lot of these paddlers are not familiar with breaking waves on the beach. Especially in Europe, most of the paddlers depart from harbors. And as we see, you can very clearly see that the runs are getting much cleaner and that should make up for the paddlers to better their average speed and probably snatching the max speed over this stretch of water. And there we can see one of the Hockley sisters being overtaken by Nicholas Notten, his two compatriots from South Africa made a very tough job to make it here to Lanzarote so congratulations to them as well as to the organizing committee and the International Canoe Federation for helping them to be here we gotta make sure that paddlers do not put their nose too forward on the holes. They gotta try and keep slightly ahead of the lip of the wave to try and make the most of the conditions. And there we are coming by the town of Costa Teguisa, just 10 kilometers away from the finish line in El Reducto, where we have our main production set and the finish line of this year's ICF Canoe Ocean Racing World Championships. Como bien comentábamos, ahí veíamos a Nicolas Noten adelantando a su compatriota Saskia Hockley, ambos de Sudáfrica que han hecho un trabajo espectacular por estar aquí hoy en la isla de los volcanes en colaboración y en permanente contacto por parte de la Real Federación Española de Piragüismo, el comité organizador del evento y la Federación Internacional de Piragüismo. Vemos cómo las condiciones han cambiado, como bien decíamos al inicio, a partir de la punta de los ancones, esta zona es seguramente donde los palistas van a mejorar bastante su velocidad media, y posiblemente podrán alcanzar las máximas en su dispositivo GPS, que eso es siempre importante. Una vez acabada la carrera se den cita a los palistas para hablar un poquito de las batallas que ha habido en la regata. Es muy importante la pugna por ver quién tuvo la velocidad máxima, si bien es cierto que el ganador y la ganadora de la prueba de hoy va a ser aquel y aquella que mantengan la mejor velocidad media.
ya que la velocidad máxima puede darse solamente en determinados tipos de ola y no suelen ser constantes y muchas veces el esfuerzo que requiere alcanzar cierta velocidad máxima puede poner en jaque el rendimiento global de la prueba ahí tenemos en imagen a Nicolás Noten pasando por delante de todos los complejos hoteleros de la isla de los volcanes que esperemos reactiven el turismo en las islas que ha sido azotado gravemente por la pandemia del COVID. Recordamos, estas islas viven exclusivamente del turismo, al igual que la inmensa mayoría del de país. Y ahí vemos cómo en, la, en el agua, digamos que presenta más espuma pegado a costa, hay unas bajas muy peligrosas, pero que, al igual que en el Molokai, en el China Wall, pueden darte una ventaja considerable con respecto a los palistas que están a tu alrededor. Y ahí en imagen seguimos con Nicolás, protagonista del streaming y de la carrera. Parece ser que sigue en la delantera y vamos a ver qué capacidad tiene Gordon Harbrick para intentar recortar distancias con el palista sudafricano de Ciudad del Cabo. Sigue manteniendo la distancia de entre unos 100 metros, quizás menos. Ahí vemos a Gordon Harbeck detrás de él, pisándole los talones. En la pugna por el segundo puesto tenemos a Uli Hart, campeón del mundo de 2019 en la categoría junior. Habiendo ganado a Jorge Enrique Gutiérrez de España. Gordon Harris que está luchando junto a él, al igual que Víctor Du. Y puede ser muy interesante también el trabajo en equipo. Sobre todo en la parte final de la regata, donde los palistas pueden ir a ola cómodamente. Y detrás de Víctor Du tenemos a Walter Bousan, que sigue en la pugna por el quinto puesto de la general. Seguramente el cuarto en la categoría de los senior y Esteban Medina pisándole los talones a Walter Nicolás Lambert no demasiado lejos y Bernardo Pereira de Portugal que está haciendo una regata espectacular en la categoría sub-23 recordamos el portugués de 19 años que quedó segundo justo detrás de Jorge Enríquez, que hoy parece ser, va a conseguir quedar en segunda posición en la categoría sub-23. En tercera posición en sub-23 tenemos al francés Pierre Vilela, quedó tercero en el europeo de Francia, de Alicante, disculpen, Tenemos al señor David Slata también muy de cerca. Looks like we have back on picture some of the ladies 
bought a Nordic kayak and a pen. They are passing by them. These guys have done an incredible job to solve the technical issues with the batteries. Here we have one of the Spanish girls. Back to the front of the race, Nicholas Notten again. He's holding off to Sir Gordon Harbrecht, Victor Du and Uli Hart. who seem to be the contenders for the fight of the medals. And the following, Esteban and Walter, who will be in for the fight. Especially Walter can be threatening to the guys in front of him as he's a blood water specialist and once he finishes the section past the Arrecife Harbor will probably be in contention for a medal. And Esteban Medina from Gran Canaria, Spain, one of the neighbor islands here in Lanzarote, he's very familiar with this race course many times podium finisher of the Atlantic Ocean Subski race. There we can see the picture again of the cliffs on the first half of the race. There we can see outstanding and very demanding conditions We'll soon be heading to the beach to interview the winners of today's race. And now it seems like Judith Vergès is trying to level with Michelle Byrne. She's done an outstanding job taking the outside line. Looks like they are just a few meters away with Anna Swetish following Judith very closely. She has been very clever trying to follow the local paddler from Catalonia now living in Gran Canaria. Judith is 28 years old. Anna Swetish, just 19, and Michelle Byrne, just over 35 years of age. As we said, surf ski is a very interesting sport. Canoe ocean racing offers a variety, a very wide range of age between the young paddlers that from the age of 16 or 18 give chase to the old dogs of the sport. And we have today in contention also to Oscar Chalupski, somebody that's just over 55 years of age. And as we saw on the podiums, both at the World Championships in Portugal in 2013, where Sean Rice, just being 23 years of age, won the gold with Tim Jacobs just chasing him down with over 35 years of age. Clint Robinson just coming second, just behind Corey Hill in Tahiti. Clint being 43 years of age at the time. And Corey over 25 years of age. Look at that. That's just poetry in motion. Few strokes, paddles down, few strokes, paddles down. Drag your knuckles on the seat. Some of the paddlers that really master the art of surf and reading 
the sea are Tahitians, people that are very well connected to the ocean on these six-man outrigger canoes. And a lot of them paddle Sersky too, such as Louis Lachlan, one of the fathers of the sport, who also won a Molokai back in the day in 2009 or 2008. Sadly missing out on this year's event. But very tough paddlers and challenging to South Africans and Australians as well as New Zealanders and some of the strong Europeans that in 2015 hosted the world champs from the Hitia Marina all the way down to Arue on the Pearl Beach Resort on the Lafayette Beach. see Nicholas Nutton just looking back his shoulder to see if Gordon is closing in. He must be starting to get a little bit anxious to see the beast from Rostock, 35 year old man chasing him down. It's not a very encouraging scene to anybody as the size of his biceps and arms and back the former German team paddler who raced the World Cups back in the day around 2010 when he decided to drop the team and go for more fun discipline as the new ocean racing is now his main outlet. And as we said, it is very Important not to lose sight of your nose. Try and get the boat onto the runs and try to link those waves perfectly. If you kind of look to the outside and your contenders, you kind of can get distracted by what the opposition is doing. And as Jasper Mocky said once on an interview, at the 2014 Doctor, there's three levels of racing in surf ski paddling. You first race with yourself, then you race the ocean, and finally you race the competitors. This being, put the focus just on your breathing, your technique, your run riding, your feelings, your sensations, your motion of the boat trying to get the boat move smoothly over the runs and try to surf well throughout the whole duration of the course see that Michelle Byrne has gotten on the track trackthereace.com you can follow the race live there There we can see some of the women just putting paddles down as they come across, come past the town of Costa Teguise. That's a very wide line. Looks like Salamengual from Spain. Back to Nicholas Norton. We can see the cranes in the back on the corner, on the top left end of the screen. That's the Arrecife Harbor. As they come near the finish line, this is going to be a very interesting end of the race. There we are. Marvelous sight. Let's 
see what's going on here. So now, after the first 12 kilometers, paddlers tend to scatter and spread away. Everyone looking for their own lines to try and get an insight on what decisions they are going to take on the course. But now as they approach Costa Teguisa, they come past the town. 10 kilometers away from the finish line, paddlers tend to join back and try and follow all the same line as they approach the harbor of Arecife as the wind starts to get a bit offshore and try to cut back and try not to do any extra yards or meters depending on which country you're from. You gotta be very careful not to waste any energy, any unnecessary energy if that's not gonna pay off to your benefit. You can see that Nicholas Notten and Gordon Harbrecht are coming close, very close now. On the track, they must be less than 50 meters away, probably even less. And the head of the women's race is getting very, very interesting. We still have Michelle Byrne almost leveling up with uh, vice European champ. You did Verges that has now fallen back to the third spot of the podium. And Anna Swetish from the US, young powder, who decided a few days before the race to switch from the Anna 23 age group up to the senior women. So that's a very blunt move. And it looks like she made the right call to try and chase that precious gold medal on today's World Championship. So 22 kilometers in for Michelle Byrne. Just over 40 meters away from Anna Swedish. And another 50 meters from Judith Verges. Looks like the women's race podium is gonna be pretty much fought very hardly by these three ladies. And Saskia Hockley, the young South African, has done a tremendous job and is coming in fourth place at the minute, probably 150 meters to 200 meters away from the three leading women. Clearly gonna take home today the gold medal. Her mom, Angie, must be very proud of her.
Nicolas Lambert, the Frenchman, probably saving a bit of energy for the last few kilometers in the flat with the leftover swell just before the Muelle de la Cebolla here coming into the flat section. David Lata from France with Victor Rodriguez and Daniel Sanchez trying to close in that top 10. On a more outside line, we've got Nordin Sparman from Germany, who came third at the Dutch Coast race in 2018. Almost surprising the first two paddlers on that year's event, Gordon Habrecht and Kenny Rice, who came first and second on a very tough course against the wind. Rosemary Edwards might be in contention for the bronze, maybe, in the women's junior. So as we said, Saskia Hockley is leading the junior women. Irene Gana from Spain also doing a very good job. So now Nicholas Norton is coming by the last kilometers. That's where he has the leftover swell. That's where he has to grab whatever he has left in the tank and put the hammer down if he really wants to take the title in today's race coming nearby the harbor of Arrecife. Looks like the organizing committee alongside the ICF and the Royal Spanish Canoe Federation and the race officials made a very accurate call to do and establish that six to 10 minute gap in the start line. Looks like the men are gonna come close to the ladies. They might be about Five to six hundred meters away, the ladies, the front three, with Michelle Burns still leading, with Anna Swetis following very closely, and Judith Burgess can maybe make something with her local knowledge. And there we have the ladies back in picture. <laughs> Judith Burgess looks like she has slowed down her cadence. It's very difficult to tell if that's due to the fatigue or trying to save some energy because she knows that the last few kilometers are really, really hard, very physically demanding. That motorboat is just trying to shoot the battle between the gold and bronze medal, uh, the gold and silver medal contenders. Anna Swetish from the U.S. Bellingham, from Washington. Third place at the 2018 Gorge. Surprising paddlers of the likes of Tineo Hatton. Haley Nixon. Rachel Clark from New Zealand, Michelle Ray. And there we have Anna Swetish. There we have, she's in second place now. Michelle Byrne should be a few meters ahead of her. And now comes a very critical decision to take on the last few meters. And there we can see in picture the Grand Hotel and the town, the capital city of Arrecife, where the race headquarters are back to Nicholas Norton, head of the race, leading, still holding off Sir Gordon Harbrecht. Now we can see he might be a bit tired. This race course, as we stated in the beginning of the streaming, is really, really demanding. 
takes a lot of concentration, a lot of effort to know what decision to make. And now coming inside the marina of Arrecife, the leading women, Michelle Byrne from Durban. No stranger to the Marine Safety Series in Durban, held by South African Barry Lewin. And there she is turning around the harbor of La Cebolla in Arrecife, looking towards the finish. There she is. She must be very happy to be taking today's title. Very nice, consistent technique. Now fatigue plays a huge role trying to maintain the technique in this last few meters. Now she's facing headwind. Very tough after 25 kilometers of tough racing, especially in the ladies race, which has been surprisingly more equal and even and very hard fought compared to the men's race where Gordon and Nicholas were just fighting out for the gold medal in the first half of the race but the ladies race has just been surprising and it's just a proof that the ladies field is getting very very strong very good news for the sport of ocean racing Let's see what happens with the battle between Anna Swetish and Judith Vergés from the US and Spain respectively. There she is looking towards the final marker inside the Marina of Arrecife where she will have some slight side win on her right hand side all the way down to the bridge about three meters, 300 meters away from El Reducto Beach where paddlers will be finishing today's race. And we'll have to do a small run to the beach to interview what looks like is gonna be today's winner of the ladies event, Michelle Byrne from Durban. Fantastic job by her. Switching now to Nicholas Norton, it looks like he's putting the hammer down again. What an outstanding performance from the young South African from Cape Town Fishuk Life Saving Club, which has a crop of very well established paddlers in the international surf scene, as well as in marathon. Kenny Rice, Sean Rice, Dominic Norton, Uli Hart. The list goes on and on, as well as David and Jasper Mucky. No strangers in uh, international podiums in these past years. There we have Nicholas trying to get onto the runs. These ones are pretty long and tough to catch. So you really can't fool and not waste energy because if you do not get onto it, you might be in for losing two or three following waves. It looks like Michelle Byrne is very close to come onto the finish line. Going back to the finish line.
tenemos al español poco detrás de Víctor Ruiz francés Walter...
Well done. Now we're going to interview Anna Swetis from the United States of America, the young partner of the main American team, and change from the other way to the other way to the open race, and took home the silver medal today. It's very close. other side of the bridge.
Allô Yo
say we are finished. Really? Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. You can go there or? Hey, okay. Okay. Water. Yeah. Okay. Or there. Or?